In 2007, Steve Jobs unleashed on the world the iPhone. What he had basically done was invert the phone. The screen became king, and the keyboard went to zero. Since 2007, many smartphone manufacturers also followed suit. Large touchscreen displays and little or no keyboard. But what also happened in 2007 since then has been this onrush of apps and social networking. Apps are these silos in your, on your phone that let you interact with your device. Here on Android, you see lots of apps that come with the device that allow you to interact with the phone and device. So when you, when you talk about apps, you have these silos of information, such as email, SMS, and your contact list, which, are really hard, which make it really hard to interact with each other. One example is, in your email, all of your contacts are separated from your SMS and your contacts. Social is a silo of another kind. In social networking, you're supposed to be able to interact with your friends and your family. But think about the following problem. Let's say you're walking down the street and you run to a friend. They come up to you and say, hey, did you get my message? First thing you have to think to yourself is, what message are they talking about? SMS, instant message, IM, are they talking about um, Facebook, Twitter? So to solve this problem, we have to redefine how the smartphone works. What we're doing is redefining everything from the ground up with social and relationships at its core. So when you think about your phone today, it's already really social. You can store things privately. You can share things with your friends, maybe a picture of your Mo. You can actually um, share things with the world. But social is not an app. Let me give you an example of what we're working on. So today, when you think about your relationships with your friends and your family, really what you think about is an app on your phone called Contact List or Address Book. This is really segregated from all the other interactions, but it also isn't the way your mind works. So when you think about your friends and your family, you don't have an alphabetical list of, hey, um, how do I, you know, I want to invite people to a party, let me go through my friends who start with A and start with B and start with C. That's not typically how you would create an invite list or a wedding invite list or anything that, of that sort. Instead, what should happen is your phone should capture all those interactions and automatically categorize these people for you. It should say, the people who are top of my mind, and I interact with a lot, should appear at the top of the list. Those, like my coworkers and those that I'm interacting with from 9 to 5, should appear at the bottom of the list. <laughs> I know a lot of folks, actually, who put AA in front of their spouse's name so that it appears at the top of their contact list. That's not how phones should work. Now, if you go back to the friend on the street who said, well, what, let me, you know, when, I, when he said to you, hey, did you get my message? And you said, well, what message are you talking about? Imagine if you could aggregate all of that in all of your apps in one unified place. So for example, if you had a, a view like this, which actually showed you all of your interactions with a person in one, in one place that allows you to see everything from Twitter, email, IM, all social networking, all interactions in one spot, it'd be very easy to say, oh, I remember it. You sent me that message. And it doesn't matter what format you sent it to me in. Again, you can see a rich view of what's going on. Latest interactions are showed at the top. Very much like a consolidated inbox, different from the app and, and the problem we have today with apps and social networking that are across many devices. So if you click on the view here, you, and detail view, you can actually see more information. And in this case, this is, these are the latest interactions with my wife. Note, this is not private, if, sorry, note, this is not public information, but private information. Very easy to see everything that's going on between text messaging, rich media like audio and video, emails, missed calls, all in one easy to, to see uh, view that's rich media. If I click on a picture here, it all comes up in line. So it's very easy to see. <laughs> that's my son, shameless plug. It's very easy to see that. In one, with one consolidated view, I don't have to go through 10 different apps to kind of find out what my wife is talking about. Notice, this is actually also a real-time view. So there you go. My wife said, good luck with your demo, and take a picture for me. So just because a camera is an app that exists on today's smartphones, it doesn't mean that the camera can't also be socially conscious. If I click on a camera here, you'll see that we have views here for private pictures that stay on device. Pictures that get shared on Facebook automatically, and also those with location tagging. So you can say, I want to you know, check into TEDx, or I want to you know, check into Foursquare. Let me take a picture. <laughs> Look at that. All right, say cheese. All right, one shot. So that's actually already on Facebook. <laughs> All right. So notice how when you redefine the phone from the ground up, 
these are the only times when you can actually get the social interaction in this way. Things are centered around people and relationships, not around apps. If you think about your phone, today you can store private information, you can share things with your friends and family, and you can actually share things with the world. But social is not an app. The phone is social. Thank you.